one's for you, Sean. <laughs> Great man. Yeah, okay, a a, well, welcome you, everybody buddy. to uh, another episode of Anderson's TV, where we are looking at something new and something old, something borrowed, something blue, um, something or, purple, and something purple. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, the uh, lovely people at Origin Effects have sent us a couple of pedals to try. Um, they are a British um, engineering and manufacturing company that that make. Uh, Guitar effects units, probably best known for their Cali 76 oh. compressor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and in more recent years for the Revival Drive, which was their sort of Marshall-y amp in a box kind of pedal. Beautiful um, things. They're, they so are. Good. Well done. You can t the minute you pick this up and you look at the, the, the tooling and the way they've milled all of the knobs and, and everything for this, this is quality, quality creme de la creme, man. gear. Absolutely. With a, with a price attached, you know, as well. So we'll get to that. Um, the Revival Drive, been really, really popular. Mm -hmm. It's a little it's kind of like Marshall amp in a box that can be used either into the front end of a, uh, an amplifier or into uh, a power amp or the effects return of an amplifier uh, in a studio, however you want to do it. Yep. And there are two more pedals in that vein that we're playing with today. The Revival Trem came out last year and is essentially uh, like a brown face deluxe early 60s fendery uh, sounding amp with probably the, the feature that everybody remembers that amp for and why that amp perhaps became iconic because it's got the bias tremolo system in it. So that's uh, this one here. And the latest one is the Magma 57 Magma. based on a perhaps an even older amplifier, an older magnetone amplifier, um, really you know, perhaps synonymous with sort of the early rock and roll kind of years, and that uh, kind of similarly to the to the uh, to the Fender amplifiers of that era was kind of became famous because of a vibe, a vibrato channel that it had in it. So that's the Magma Fifty Seven. We're going to play that, and we've got it set up into to two amps. So um, that first little bit that you heard. Uh, was Pete playing into the front end of his DP40, which is a, a clean sounding amp. In fact, now that everything's switched off, we can strum a room. Yeah, we can. Like. The... So that typically, if we're playing through that side, that's your idea of what it's going to sound like if you use it in a conventional pedal board mm -hmm. method. Uh, over here, we have another Victory amplifier, actually pretty much the same Victory amplifier, um, but now we're plugged into the effects return. And when we revisit using those, we'll switch over to the power amp mode and dial it up to give you an idea of what it sounds like. And I think from Origins vibe, they kind of feel that the pedal sort of, what's the right word, is more in its happy place when it's being put into an effects return or, or a, a, a flat power amp, because then they, I think they feel it's like all the juices of the, what they're trying to do comes out. Whereas yeah. if you're going into the preamp of another amp, it's almost like a the, the tone is a sort of a mishmash of what this is trying to do plus what that's trying to do. Yeah, yeah. Anywho, yeah. Anyway. I kind of think, although that's a big selling point of these pedals, most of you guys are probably just using pedals into the front See of your amp. About, so, yeah. um, I did, we did use it at, did I do, when I did a video on it, I put it into a uh, cap sim. Yes. You can do that and it sounded great. So yep. if you're sitting at home, you're wondering, you want a bit of, bit better tones for your uh, setup at home. Yep. Perfect with the... Um, so you'll see, if we talk about the, the knobs and buttons that are on the Revival Trem. And it, honestly, I have to do my hands up. The reason that we didn't do a video on this when it first came out was honestly, I just thought it was a really expensive tremolo pedal. Yeah. And I kind of thought, oh, who's interested in that? I hadn't realized that it was essentially a, you know, a, a Fender-y sounding version of their revival drive. Otherwise, we probably would have done this demo earlier. So we've got controls along the top, output, tone, and drive. We have controls for the tremolo system, which are an intensity, uh, the ability to change the, the shape of the tremolo between, I think it's a sine wave and a full wave. And then we have a speed control with three different sets of speed. Underneath here, we have the pro post drive EQ. This is where we make the adjustment depending on the kind of amp that we're plugged into. So we've gone with 
uh, EQ2, which is designed for an amp that's a little darker. Uh, EQ1 is an amp that's a little brighter, so maybe like a, a, a Marshall JTM or something like that. There's perhaps a spikier sounding amplifier. And then the top mode power amp is where you're just going and that's what we're using when we switch over to the other amp. So let's go in, let's put everything on 12. It's quite gainy actually with everything on 12. And we'll try just the, the pre amp -y kind of section of it. Here we go. <laughs> Lovely overdrive sound. It's a great overdrive sound. Yeah. I mean, the, the, I can't, I'm not brilliant at kind of going, oh, these are the players that use that kind of amplifier, but probably the one that comes to mind in more recent years who has a big collection of those kind of brown face uh, Fender amps and likes to play them loud is Joe Bonamassa. Yeah. So, well, you that's know. That's a lot of gain with the Gibson. We'll try, we'll try the Gibson as well. Okay, at some so point. If, I, if I turn the, the drive down and we just go spanky clean. The nuances, isn't it? It's all the little. The, it's you can the harmonics just hear the like, harmonics in the. Per that's why I like. Yeah. I've got the compact on my board, and it's. It doesn't. It doesn't. It just makes everything sound more. It, it's all the when you hear those old it's Fender iconics. amplifiers, yeah. and it's just there's always that little bit of hair there, and there's something, and it's the way it yeah. compresses, and it's just. You it's know, nice it, to it's, play. It's, it's, it's a good sound. Something it's interesting. Nice. There isn't really. I mean, if I go back to just the, the, the amp on its own. Mm. Amp on its own is a much more modern, clean sound. Yeah. There's much more headroom, more bass end. Yeah. And you can, if you want to get that more vintagey, old school, clean tones, this is a great way of doing it. Try to demonstrate just with the EQ switch there, the little EQ setting, just what that does when you switch between EQ sure. one and EQ two. And the little switch there on the top next to it is the level of how much you sort of choose to dial into that. I mean, here's the power amp. You can hear if your amp is naturally quite thin and bright, that's what you need to engage to fatten it. I would think that, yeah. But it doesn't really work with that amp. EQ2 works it up much And then if you dial the switch. You get more of that EQ. I think they were saying that that, that adjust control there is no adjust, that's it. there is no sense that there's a um more or less or whatever you're just literally dialing it until your amp just goes oh yeah i like that i like it there yeah, i like the sound well, there so there isn't really a sense of going oh try turning it here or there just it's one of those dead easy controls plug it all in start at the bottom turn it all the way around to the top then go I back like again and then go that's where i like it yeah. and that's where and it then does go. move that switch which is really handy yeah actually once you set it it's it quite yeah, it's quite tight isn't yeah, yeah. it and difficult to to, to um well, mess misses. with by mistake. Yeah. Right, I'm going to start. Uh, maybe just have a quick play with the tone control. What does this do? Let's play. It's a tone control, Pete, which is kind of good because that's what it says it is. Um, let's I'm always do... surprised every time yeah. it says tone and I dial it and the tone goes away and it gets brighter. So let's wind some drive in and yep. maybe again those kind of, again, Joe Bonamassa when he talks about his old amps, he likes to wind everything up and then, you know, Shall control I change the, the... to the... Uh... You could probably do it with the telly, but let, let's yeah. have a little bit of...
buttons when I dialed down a bit. If I'm playing in my tone control. Great, man. Amazingly, I like this guitar. How much more gain there was in those early Fender amplifiers than perhaps from the sort of mid '60s onwards than they really did. The brown face period. is different as well. Yeah. There's because um, the the riff amp I've got is a brown face circuit, and, and yeah. the same as you got, and it it definitely cranks differently. Yeah. It's not trying to stay clean in the way the black face was. In a way, it's 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 just letting you gain it. Yeah. Up. Let's put the tremolo circuit in, and again we'll have a Sounds little play great, around. Man. Yeah, I, again, I'm not, I, I don't want to come across as like, you know, I'm not, I'm no tremolo expert or whatever like that. It's, it's just apparently the, the, you know, the bias trem circuit is different to the optical trem circuit. And it is apparently the one everybody goes it's for. It's the one that, it's, it's the, the one, one that, is that the one that's on the, um, uh, on the flint? Is that the one? I don't Maybe. know. Do you so, know, uh, aficionado, that's a... Uh, DiCaprio, that's Leonardo's brother. It is. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> uh, anyway, here's the trouble. Leonardo aficionado. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> aficionado DiCaprio. Oh, aficionado DiCaprio. Yeah, sorry. We've got that totally wrong way around. Right, let's start with um, low intensity, lower kind of speed, super subtle. It's good, um, isn't it? It's good. So, I was well, like, loving you, it's easy because you're exactly beautiful. Exactly that, was that like kind of vibe, isn't it? Vibe. So little, still staying on the, the, I think, I'm sure we're on the sine wave mode. Let me just triple check. So, yes, we're on the sine wave, which is the more subtle one. We'll go okay. over to full wave in a minute. Um, um, here we go, a little bit more speed. nice as well because one of the things I don't like about um, the vibrato or tremolo circuits on our amplifiers, particularly old fenders, is you can never slow them down enough and it doesn't feel like in the sweep of 0 to 10 on a, on a knob it takes you quite as across the sort of the spread quite, of speed that you want. It's quite quick isn't it? Yeah and what they've done really cleverly here is given you three amounts of speed so wherever you are if you're in the first speed gain goes from really slow to kind of like quite fast but then you you know so if you want to go crazy fast you can just turn it up to the you know the crazy fast times three <laughs> mode and it will go crazy fast like you picked a brilliant riff there i guess now to show you the full wave because now what you really want to do is for that tremolo to almost cut the, the volume out as you get to the yep. bottom of the wave. So you want so, that, that's um, that one. So, so here we go. Cut it completely out. No. Okay. Well, That's the maximum. Yeah. Ha 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 ha. I don't know. I was put. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. 
how good the gain sound yeah, is on no, this. That's 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 the thing. They they got the gain. I, really, I think for me the the big revival drive was it was too much. I couldn't work it out. Yeah. As soon as the little one came, it's like that's that's good. And I just set everything like this on it and it just sounds great it's just you know? great and i and i i'm kicking myself really because it's just we should have done that yeah absolutely i, I just hey, i don't hey. i honestly I know, I know that the trem bit is a big part of this pedal and i'm sure it's going to appeal to massively loads of people but i actually think the the preamp sound of it for me is almost like the juicier bit it's, it's great, isn't it? great and you get a drive um, and a tremolo in one pedal who yeah, else does that uh the, there's a foot switch socket on the back here so what you can do if you have a momentary foot switch so you know like one that doesn't latch on and off they make use one, the, the yeah you can use a momentary foot switch to um adjust the speed of the tremolo in real time so you can just tap on it and obviously trap it the tempo the, yeah um wow. what a cool pedal so that's the revival trim. I tell you what we should do. Let's just okay. Let's stay on that. Let's go over to now uh, the amp that we've plugged into the effects return. Change to the power amp mode, and just adjust this thing to sort of get it where we like it. So if we just play a little and just. The changes are much more subtle. The changes are much more subtle in power amp mode than it yeah. when it was in EQ1 mode. So it sounds different as well, doesn't it? So if it? I turn this off now, so this is uh, this is basically the sound of the guitar straight into the power section. So no tone stack, and I think mm -hmm. we just got a pair of EL6L6 EL6L6 of 6L6s in here. So kind of fendery. Yeah. Uh, but this is what uh, a guitar would sound like. I'm reaching for the tone control. So let's engage our. Very different in very power different. in the in in the yep. um very different it is well, maybe it's because it's i'm quick. sitting in front i'll of just the... jump back so if i put it back on e Different top end, hasn't it's a it? Different top end is it? Top end. It's and I'm, crispy. I, I think that the the preamp in there is kind of rolling off some of the natural top end that the, that the could be. pedal wants to do. And could this be. Is a, that's why this one almost sounds a bit hairier, a bit spikier. It sounds it's, probably more like it actually would do. Well, you that, know? yeah, I, I'm not familiar enough with the amp, but that's obviously what um, Origin yeah. were, uh, are claiming. Sounds great. Uh, you want a little bit of the tremolo? Dirty yeah, yeah, when can you we, turn it too loud. Can we try it with the Les Paul? Yeah, Just, we can. And then we'll jump onto the Magma. Magma! <laughs> 57 <laughs> in a minute. This is very serious, Pete, this whole yeah, review. Yeah, I think this is really... We're coming across like, you know, semi-professional guitar demonstrators at this rate. Okay, okay, okay so we're back in the room. Here's the Les Paul, and here is... <laughs> Can we 
we take the volume of the guitar right down and I'll I'll blow the ears off this thing and we'll just go this is a this is your clean tone now. <laughs> the revival trem now we're going to basically do the same kind of repeat demo of the magma 57 i gotta be honest with you i'm not sure i've i've definitely never plugged into a, an old original magnetone oh, no no not 57 I've probably only ever played one or two of the the reissues so i am really not the right you know not the right person to go oh it sounds just like sounds one no me neither um, but if it sounds great i like it that's all that matters isn't it yes so we're back on the eq2 mode back in the front end of the dp40 um and here is our is that i wasn't expecting i kind of in more recent years, I know Billy Gibbons has been a like a magnetone guy. Yeah. And I'm guessing I don't know if that goes back to you know what he used in the old days. So I think I was expecting something more martially, and what we've actually got is something much cleaner than that. Much cleaner. Um, but that might need a guitar as well. We'll try the gibbs gib yeah, gib in a moment. So here we go, I'll keep playing around. Makes that sound it's not more, that, doesn't it's, it? Yes, yeah, not that different to the basic tone stack in the in the DP40. Just make it sound better. Just, yeah. just, a bit just bigger. open it up. Cross. Oh man. <laughs> I think I like that one more than that one. Oh maybe it's different. I don't know. Anyway, look. So let's turn let's turn the, the, the drive down. This has got a vibrato channel and the whole Somewhere in the annals of time, the word vibrato and the word tremolo have got deeply mixed up. I'm not entirely sure. Is it the same though? Vibrato, tremolo, vibrato is uh, pitch, I believe, and tremolo is volume. Sorry. Vibrato and tremolo, mm -hmm. I'm sure tremolo is Oh, I don't know. One of them is pitch wobbling and yeah. one of them is volume wobbling, wobbling isn't it? Yeah. I'm never really sure whether or not they've got this the right way around or not. Oh, whoever. No, I tell, I tell a lie, sorry. It's, it's the tremolo circuit is correct. That's volume going up. It's a tremolo system on a guitar. That this is one, not, that, that's not tremolo. Yeah, that should be a vibrato. That's, that's vibrato, isn't it? Yeah. So that's, that's, that's where but I that's was That's what we always at. call in Denmark, it's called a in vibrato arm. So there's vibrato right. arm, so there's vibrato system. So anyway. we should be hearing then on vibrato now, we're hearing pitch not volume the yo 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 uh, but we've basically got a similar kind of thing we've got <laughs> so an intensity control we've got this idea of this three stage speed control 
And then we've got this um, this blend thing, which is going through zero degrees to one eighty degrees. I'm going to have to. I'm going to tell you exactly. That's that what... must be the width of it. Okay, the so girth. in the center position, the blend switch delivers pure pitch vibrato. In the zero degrees position, the wet and dry signals are combined in phase, creating a phase cancelling effect similar to the chorus mode on the classic Univibe. So that's chorus uh, mode. And then the 180 mode is the wet and dry signals are combined out of phase, creating a unique chorus effect. Okay, well, okay, here we okay. go. In the middle of the start. The zero degree mode. And the one eighty mode. That's nice, man. Put a bit of gain on, okay. please. That's nice, isn't it? It's huge. That's I lovely. mean, it sounds like you've. It literally sounds like you've put two cabs and run the whole thing in stereo, yeah. even though it's just one cab. Let's uh, jump over now to running it into the effects return of this amp and back on the uh, back on the the EQ needs to be set. Oh uh, yes, put it on. Get just noodle around with this. Same as on that, it's very subtle, subtle on power amp mode. I'm not even entirely sure what I'm listening for. I'm almost just kind of going, oh, I think it sounds best there. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay, so here we go. Let's, um, so just as a comparison, here's nothing. Bring love, yeah. that loveliness, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. remembered a story oh here we go that Felix told me and I'm uh, apologies if Phil if you're watching and I've got this totally wrong that um, some uh, do you know what there's something Phil X I'm sure had an old magnetone amplifier still does that he used sure he for does. like um, it was what his original evil robot amplifiers were kind of his signature evil robot amps were based around and he tells a Van Halen story about being in the studio at the same studio as, Van, as Eddie Van Halen. And I can't remember whether or not it was Phil heard Van Halen using the magnetone and that's how he, or whether Phil had one anyway and Eddie heard him using it and they start talking about it. But the story goes basically, Phil was, uh, Eddie was like, oh yeah, I've got a bunch of those magnetone amplifiers at home like that. And, and it's when he turned out to a bunch, the story goes, he took him back to his house, opened up the lockup and there's not like half a dozen. There's like a hundred of them. Like these magnetone amplifiers on a shelf that Eddie had collected over the years. Or May whatever. he rest in peace. Um, 
So I don't mind that. Maybe that's a good time to jump over to the guitar with the with the humbucker on it and just see if we've got some higher gain. That's. Um, but yes, that's a cool story. If it's true. If it's true, <laughs> if I remember. No, I've seen a picture of him with yeah. with Macintosh amps in the background. So. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely more gain. <laughs> Spiky, it's a very it different gain, isn't it, yeah. than the other? I don't know if you want to stay on that guitar, go back, but let's get Hendrixy. A little bit less gain, maybe, and we'll add in the the vibe well, he played side a of things. Gibson as well, didn't he? Yeah, uh, periodically had a V or something. V, like that, yeah, v. yeah. I'm searching for the tone there. Back to the other guitar. I think it might be better with a single. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I meant to say as well, uh, same deal on this as on the uh, revival trem. You can put a momentary foot switch in and control the speed of the uh, vibrato. <laughs> I was just about to say, can you put some more verb on it? Beautiful job there. You know, the only way we could have topped that would have either been had Jimmy himself or Eric Gales. Eric <laughs> Gales is the one that does but that, it. But that, honestly, that sounds killer. It's great. Yeah, it's great. They're both, they're both great pedals. Just, but for that ear, that sound, I mean, I, I don't believe Hendrix was ever um, uh, used a magnetone amplifier. Maybe he did. I don't, don't think I've, I don't think I've seen pictures like that. But it's we're so borderline in that kind of chewy, univibey. Maybe, slightly maybe broken up kind of tone. Well, we, maybe, you know what, I think, in truth, I bet you, back in the 50s and 60s, I bet amp circuits weren't that different, regardless of what name was on the front of it. Are they now, though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is. A, I think they're more different now, but I think if like you go back circuits. to <laughs> early Fenders and Magnetones and then the, the early Marshalls, you know, they were all basically had the same ballpark. Are these, of, are these as old as... You know some of the Fender amps and stuff. Were the, were the Fender amps first? Or, I mean, Fender yeah. Fender were making amps from you know pretty much as soon as they started making electric guitars. But uh, I don't know much about Magnetone. I mean, this I'm assuming from the name, it's based on a, an amp from 1957. But well, you would think so, wouldn't you? You would think so. Uh, <laughs> I think it sounds it's, great. And they win the award this year for the best name of anything because Magma. Magma is magma. Just fantastic. Magma. Please, can we have a clip of uh, someone else saying Magma now, please? Thank you. Magma. With liquid hot magma. Liquid hot magma. Mag mag magma. Magma. 
magma. Liquid hot magma. Thanks. There that we go. Awesome. Good. So um, I've left the uh, worst bit of news till last. So you are going to have to have somewhere between 350 and 400 pounds uh, for each of these. Yeah. Um, and they're not cheap, are they? But they're great. No. But it's it's a bit like it's like Stella Artois, isn't it? It's like reassuringly expensive. Is it? No, it's Stella Artois. It's not like Stella. No, it's not a Stella. Three pound a pint. But that was their that was their kind of uh, advertising slogan oh, okay. for many years. Okay. It's like reassuringly expensive. Um, they yeah. sound great. They do sound great. And they're they feel beautifully great. made. They look great. And, they're, and they're made in the UK. Um, by hand. By hands, yes. As opposed to feet. So there we are, mm. Mr. Pete. There we go. Um, they sound great, man. I enjoyed this uh, slightly sensible little half an hour, 40 minutes, yeah. whatever it is. Uh, three, six probably and too and a half long. Hours. Hour, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it's been a long day. That's it. Any questions? Put them in the comment section below and we'll ignore them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, man. Please much. like and subscribe. Ignore what he said. We'll not reply back, ever. Take care. <laughs> See you later, guys. Bye.